So we just received another testimony email that I wanted to read. Um, before I do, I did want to make a, a brief statement about the last testimony video that I made. I made the, the dumb mistake of not specifying. I just, I guess I just assumed that since I've been doing these testimony videos for some time now, that it would be understood that I was just reading an email from somebody. Um, and the last one that I did, the guy had the, the same name as I did. Um, but that was not my testimony. So for anyone who's new, and you, that was the first one, a lot of people thought that that was my story, but it's not. I don't want there to be confusion about that. But that was a different will. Um, I'm not 25. I don't know if I wish I was still 25 or not. I was kind of a mess at 25. I, I, I mean, it's still getting... Uh, lots of views and I'm, I'm it's such an amazing uh, story so i just wanted to try and clarify that and so hopefully i can avoid making that mistake in the future but same name different guy now this this email is from a guy named dan and uh i'm just gonna read it for you now it says hi will i'm 26 and i live in australia i was raised in a left-leaning non-religious middle-class family I had never considered religion once during my formative and teenage years. I was heavily indoctrinated at school, as we all are, and thus my earlier years are of no great interest, and to reflect on my childhood past the age of five all the way to the age of eighteen and to understand what was being done to me saddens me on a profound level. Academically I performed poorly, as my mind was fixated on the why regarding everything I, I was taught or learned. I have always been extremely social and deeply caring for people. Empathizing and connecting with others came easily to me, and I formed many strong friendships and was well-liked and popular throughout my school and university years. I studied psychology as a result of my fascination with human beings, but it was a philosophy course that set me on the path to my salvation. I had become obsessed with understanding the nature of the human mind, human consciousness, and what it meant to be human. I studied Heidegger and Kant and lost myself in the convoluted mental abstractions of these men presented to me as great works of literature. I distinctly remember reading Heidegger's Being and feeling like I had it all figured out. I'd finally understood what it meant to be a human being, what consciousness really was, attending study sessions with my fellow classmates and having late passionate arguments over red wine about the true nature of human consciousness. All of these people were atheists. The topic of God was never once addressed in class nor in private with friends, and if it ever was, it was in an uncomfortable, derogative, cynical manner. Although I was convinced there was no God, I had been successfully brainwashed via my upbringing, friend circle, media, and university to view the Bible as being an irrelevant, laughable book for the sheep. When I was alone and with my thoughts, I was unable to reconcile my own gnawing awe regarding human consciousness with the atheistic idea that we evolved by chance from formless organic matter that for no reason came to be conscious. And I didn't know it at the time, but I was beginning to reject and become repulsed by the idea of atheism. This is where the seed was planted and the gnawing of my spirit to find the truth began. At this stage of my life, I was heavily addicted to lust and women. I spent the majority of my time at university chasing women, partying, and escaping with alcohol and recreational drugs. I would oscillate between extreme highs when I was out partying, embracing the idea that nothing matters and we exist to experience as much as possible before we die, and crushing inexplicable existential comedowns when I was alone with my thoughts or hit with the emotional repercussions of my hedonistic lifestyle. Nothing I learned in philosophy would comfort me, explain anything, or help me come to terms with the state of human beings in my own inexplicable consciousness. I began to realize that I was studying the existential lamentations and cries of other men in the same position as me. During this time I became aware something was extremely wrong with the world. I became consumed with existential malaise. All I cared about was, where did I come from? Who am I? Why do other people not seem to care about these things? And wrestling with the incomprehensible reality that I was going to die and cease to exist, that my life ultimately was worthless and meant nothing. I could not come to terms with the reality that these fundamental questions did not seem to be the collective goal of the human race to answer above everything else. I sunk deeper into drug use with my atheist friends deeper into rampant alcoholism and sex to keep me distracted from the rapidly consuming discomfort I felt within my own body. I rejected philosophy and psychology. I began stealing, lying, cheating on partners who loved me deeply. I was no longer able to care about others and viewed human beings and the world as tools for my own nihilistic pleasure, as means to my own personal ends. 
However, when I wasn't drunk or escaping with physical pleasure, my mind was fixated on my own impending end. I spent countless nights driving aimlessly, thinking to myself, this can't be it. This can't be all there is. This can't be life. I recall many times I would drive to the ocean, sit at the shore, and cry. Many nights I would be awoken in a state of terror, unable to accept that one day I would just stop existing. I couldn't understand why, as an atheist who accepted that we evolved by chance and are ultimately here for no reason, this bothered me so much on a profoundly spiritual, not to mention biological level, and that the things I was doing in my life were crushing me. I could not seem to understand why others around me were progressing through life so, quote, easily, that these thoughts did not seem to trouble anyone else and to the extent that they bothered me. In the depths of my crippling existential malaise, I began to accept that the world was not how I'd been told it was. I came across 9-11 conspiracy theories and my fascination of human beings coupled with my empathetic understanding of our nature as a direct result of my own horrible behavior and psychology studies allowed me to almost instantly believe and accept that 9-11 was an inside job. Things began clicking for me as I realized, or rather believed, the source of my existential depression came as a result of the true nature of human beings and the consequential way in which the world had been structured. I began to believe human beings are inherently bad, that the default state of man is that of an animalistic primitive lust, greed, and desire for power. We evolved from apes, after all. I researched and consumed every conspiracy theory available to me, believing them all without so much as a single doubt. I was smug. I felt as though I knew the, quote, truth now. I was woke. I understood human nature, and thus understood how and why this was simply just the state of humanity. Those at the top must remain at the top, as it is within the animal kingdom. One evening I stumbled across WikiLeaks and the Podesta Clinton emails, and after a few nights of research my world was completely flipped upside down. I went completely insane for the next two months or so, in which I was researching child satanic ritual abuse and politics extensively and in depth. I could not fathom that such evil could exist in the world, even though I believed I had human beings all figured out. I could not reconcile this level of horror and objective evil and the way it psychologically and spiritually destroyed me within my own atheistic, morally relativist worldview. Pizzagate utterly ruined me. As I began to find evidence of its objective truth in my own neighborhood, I truly went insane. I lost my girlfriend, many friends, and my family distanced myself from me as I tried to talk to them about it, to show them how unfathomably sick this world is. Pizzagate showed me the true nature of this planet, that there is a long-existing familial bloodline that rules this planet, and that it goes beyond simple money and power consolidation. I discovered in total disbelief that these people worship religious gods, and thus I was unable to relate to them on even a human level, not just a moral level. They weren't just, quote, bad people. I was terrified. I began to see evidence of their worship in every facet of mainstream media, music, movies, news. I began to realize that my entire life, everything I had ever been taught was true or good was a lie perpetrated by these same people, and that they were quite literally mocking humanity. My understanding of history was all a lie. I began to see that the entire world had been set up in a way to keep these people and their completely unbelievable religious activities protected, hidden, and untouchable. I researched the Illuminati, the Bilderbergs, the Rothschilds, and completely re-educated myself on human history. I was desperate to understand the objective reality of the world I lived in, no matter how sick and unbelievable it was. After six months of re-education and exposure to the reality of this world and the people who control it, I fell into a hopeless, suicidal depression. I felt completely disconnected from life and the world. It was the most terrifying place I've ever been in. I was spiritually destroyed, angry, desperate, and tired. I simply could not come to terms with it all. I realized I could not live a life in which I had been born into slavery to people who kidnap, sell, torture, mutilate, rape, and ritually sacrifice the world's children to gods, that lie to us about history, about science, about every conceivable truth we think to be true. I felt like I had gone absolutely insane, that I was living in a sick, laughable nightmare, and I simply could not come to terms with it. My family did not care, my friends ridiculed me, and I was alienated and alone. I couldn't work, I couldn't sleep, I had no motivation to do anything. I found Flat Earth one night in a state of complete spiritual submission. I thought, this is most likely true. In fact, I already know this is true. And Eric Dubay's video resonated with me 
within seconds. I instinctively knew that the Earth was flat, and I already knew the motivation behind why we were taught otherwise. I cried again, shutting myself away in my room for days, leaving only to climb up onto my roof and stare up at the sky and stars at night. Flat Earth was the final nail in the coffin, and I finally realized I was unable to live as a slave in this nightmarish reality. I could relate to no one. All my friends distanced themselves from me. I lost my girlfriend, and I had no one I could even begin to speak about any of this to. I saw no conceivable way in which I could continue living with this, and I began planning my suicide. My Flat Earth awakening on the tale of Pizzagate, in no uncertain terms, opened my eyes to the reality that there is objective, unquestionable evil in this world. Upon listening to Eric Dubay one night in bed, I heard him reference the firmament in the Bible, and searched Flat Earth Bible, which led me to your channel. I have exclusively watched yours, ODD's, and Chris White's videos for the past three months. Three months ago, in the depths of existential and suicidal depression, I read the Bible after one of your early Flat Earth videos and began feverishly researching Christianity, Jesus Christ, and his life and teachings. Once I had the sufficient historical evidence I needed to satisfy my analytical mind and take the story of Jesus seriously, I read the New Testament for the first time in my life and involuntarily wept. I felt as if my life was being pieced back together with every verse I read every word of Jesus, every testimony of his disciples. I felt as if the desperate yearning and gnawing inside me since childhood was being nurtured and soothed. The scriptures and ideas I had been so staunchly opposed to, so mocking of, instantly and naturally resonated in me, with no cognitive effort on my behalf, to where I felt they were speaking directly to the spirit inside me that I had so vehemently denied existed for most of my life. I completely submitted. I went to the bathroom and stared at myself in the mirror and broke down, calling out to God. I was almost hysterical. I repented for every single wrongdoing, every sin I had committed that I could think of and called out to Jesus Christ. In that moment, I felt something I had never felt in my life since being held in my mother's arms as a baby. I felt like I was home, at complete ease and complete peace, and felt an indescribable weight lift from me and true love taking its place. I cannot put this experience into words, but I was consumed, and as quickly as I had broken down, I was left smiling and sobbing with joy, shaking my head in disbelief. By far it was the most profoundly emotional and moving experience I have ever had. I truly believe he himself led me to God. I can't explain my journey and the destination I've reached in any other way. My outlook on life has completely changed and I am at ease. I am now more aware of the depravity of this world, but I have come to terms with it. I am still in the stages of wanting to do nothing but praise Him and love Him. I want to dedicate my life to Him. The love I feel for Christ and the love I feel from Him is like nothing I have ever experienced. I cannot put it into words. It is simply the answer and the reason to continue living. The Bible is the only way to come to terms with waking up. It is the only thing that will soothe and console you on a spiritual level that you are going to be okay, and that everything we are facing and are yet to face has been written and is meant to be. The Bible is the origin and the meaning of your life laid out before you. It is the fundamental truth and the only truth. Jesus Christ is the only truth in this world and he died so that rotten people like me are able to wake up navigate their way through the spiritual enslavement that we have been born into, break free from the evil that has consumed and poisoned humanity and find the path back to our Father. There is simply no other alternative. There is nothing else but Him. There is no existential peace or sense of reason, no satiation of the gnawing and slowly building discomfort within you that eventually demands you confront and understand your origin and life without Him. We live in a flat, enclosed system God created everything within this system for us. Everything outside of this system is God's domain and our true spiritual point of origin. We are made in God's image to have dominion over and experience life with, within a physical realm he created for us to inhabit. Jesus Christ is the physical human manifestation of God sent here by God himself to show us the truth of what and who we are. Without Jesus Christ suffering for us, we are doomed. The proof of this reality comes with understanding that this is being hidden from us. 
The proof is the realization that evil objectively controls the world and the human condition. Thank you so much, my friend. Please don't stop making videos. Oh.